Uh, so my name is Dr. Brian Abraham. I am a computational biologist in Rick Young's lab at the Whitehead Institute for Biomedical Research. I'm a computer guy, so that means that instead of working with chemicals and cells all day, I deal with the data sets that people generate. I deal with large sets of genes, large sets of, of genome-wide information. In this lab, everything's going toward this concept of cell identity and how cell identity is controlled and how, how genes are interpreted by different kinds of cells. Uh, and those different kinds can be between a blood and a skin cell, or those two kinds could be between lung cell and lung cancer. I was a dinosaur kid, so that's the best way to start. And Jurassic Park came out, and they had the little Mr. DNA in there. And I'm like, what, well, what's DNA? I'm very interested in this from, a, from an early age. But I mean, science classes were always my worst classes, somehow, because um, they were both mainly around mechanics and physics, and, and that stuff never really clicked with me. Uh, I am a saxophonist, a classically trained saxophonist. We do exist. And honestly, it, it did train me to work in this kind of atmosphere, <laughs> believe it or not, um, because you, you, it's, it, it's, the band is arranged in a, in a similar way. You have individual contributors with their own instruments, and then they all act within a section of you know, saxophonists or a section of French horns. And that's kind of how we work our, our projects around here. We have a section of people who are dedicated to understanding enhancer RNAs. We have a section of people dedicated to studying reprogramming. But then put them all together, and you start to see how these projects sort of synergize toward uh, making this, this great orchestral sound that, that is the Young Lab, that is trying to understand this concept of cell identity. I started out as an information technology major. I was going to be a web programmer. And it, it was important for me to find something important to do. And I mean, what's more important to do than figure out what, what's going wrong in cancer? And, and uh, I gave it a shot one summer. I did a, a summer internship at uh, Roswell Park Cancer Institute in Buffalo. And I fell in love with it. I realized this is what I have to do. And this is, this is uh, the, the perfect mixture of what I'm good at and something that's important that I can make a difference in. So I start my analysis out with my hypothesis. Does drug X do better than drug Y? And I come at it and I try to design my analysis and my experiments to see if, yeah, it does do better than Y. X does do better than Y, or no, no it doesn't do any better than Y. And, and this is a really exciting time to be in the lab. And we're able to take these drugs that target the pathways we understand really well. And when we take these drugs and we put them onto cancer cells, the really nastiest forms of cancers, the ones that have nothing for them yet, um, they're performing really well in preclinical studies. So this is a drug time course where we've treated these cells, LY1 cells, which is a, a type of uh, uh, myeloma, I believe. And so we see each one, of the, each one of these gray lines is a gene and how that gene's transcription level, that, their expression level, responds over the course of this drug treatment. We represent the same sort of thing. We're, gene, we're watching gene expression. We're watching it in terms of, of color. And intensity of color here has, uh, has, has to do with how much a gene is going down. So uh, if it doesn't go down at all, it's in black. If it goes up a lot, it's in red. If it goes down a ton, it's in this really bright green. So, and so because they respond so well in preclinical studies, we want to understand, well, what are these drugs actually doing? What is the effect that the drugs are having, not only on the cells, but on the genes and on the interpretation of those genes by these cells. So here we have our, our favorite drug. Um, and each one of these lines represents where a certain protein is bound uh, relative to certain genes. So for every gene, we got the binding profile of this protein nearby. So if we stop the transcription from that gene, we stop production of the estrogen receptor protein, and we start to see cancers dying. Well, the best case scenario is um, this, this preclinical compound we have, this, this proto-drug, if you want to call it that, and how it is showing these just amazing results in the nastiest forms of cancer, in the triple negative breast cancer, which, if you're a woman, that's, that's virtually a death sentence at this point, or with the small cell lung cancer, which is just the nastiest form of, of lung cancer that there is. And we're seeing these amazing effects and I'm watching them happen on my computer screen. I'm watching their data come back to show that 
our favorite proto drug is just decimating these really nasty cell populations and it's kicking the legs right out from underneath them in, in a bunch of different ways. So the best case scenario is I can say in 20 years that I got onto the ground floor of the next great cancer drug um, and I understand it better than anyone else in the world. And it's this collaborative atmosphere. So everybody sort of contributes to experimental design, contributes to uh, data analysis. I'm right in the trenches. Yeah. I'm right in the trenches with all the people who do the pipetting. I mean, the fa I sit in the lab, I walk up and down the lab, I talk, I have collaborations with virtually everyone in the lab. And I really think that I have the best, one of the best jobs in the world. Yeah, I mean, science is going in such a way where they need somebody who can translate gobs and gobs of data down to that one core truth of how biology is behaving, about how the cells are behaving. So it, it's, it's an amazingly cool job, and it's, um, it's one that I would not have expected I'd have 10 years ago. Um, but I'm so glad that I, that I fell into this, and I can, I can do something important with just my little clickety-clack nerd skills. I thought I was going to be the, West web, the best web programmer in the world, and I met the best web programmers in the world, and I realized I wasn't one of them, and I wasn't going to be one of them. And um, that got me looking for something important to do. So fail, fail early in your search for doing something important with the skills that you have. And that's, that's all, that, I mean, that's all I have because that's all I've done. <laughs>